it's gray green, but it's you know it's too light. Green, so gray green. Yeah. So I'm using um, Prussian and yellow. I'll throw that in there, and it needs a little bit of red. Let's try that. That's a pretty dark value. Maybe it touch lighter. And maybe it touch bluer. But I don't want to think too much about color. Even though my whole life is color. <laughs> I really want to get those values. And that's why. That's why, because this this strategy kind of releases you from having to think too much, well, having to think everything at once. Why not, why not let's just get something sort of ballpark in there first, and then we'll refine. It's pretty dark, but... Value-wise, I might want to lighten them up as they get toward the bottom there a little bit more. Just a dark way up this way. I'll shoot some little values behind it too. Some little backlit, some backlit things back there. to do with them too. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Shh. I don't even have to try. You're covering up your brushes. So. I don't even have to try. And I'm not going to bother drawing this out with a pencil. But you know what you might want to do is just give yourself a little bit of a border. If you're going to do a watercolors, just always get in the habit of thinking that you need a little bit around the outside for You need a little bit, a bit about the, around the outside for framing. Matting. Giving yourself about an inch. One more. Something like that. Yes, thank you. Do you want to stand in front of me? Oh, no, it's it's okay. Okay. Parameters here. usually a good I'm you know plain air is a lot about just winging it so because that's how you get the freshness so the trade-off with with clean now a lot of plain air painters do work, really work out their values and stuff and even I do too but I find that I get the most uh, spontaneity and, and I'm just making decisions right on the spot You're just doing the drawing right now. About the color of it. I'm mostly concerned about the value of it. Okay. And then I'm going to put in these um, trees here. Make up a green any way you can. 
Prussian blue, cad yellow, a little bit of red. Almost always works. That's knowing watercolor too, that's gonna dry really light. And if I wanted those little lights in there, I could just go like this. Kind of paint around those. Yeah, but yeah, mostly values. So in other words, I do throw in the color, but I'm mostly thinking about the value. Not so much the color. It's to let the value dominate it, not the color. Now, unfortunately in watercolor, you know, you can't just nail the value because it, it lightens up on you. So I may have to go over that with a glaze. Because that's going to dry lighter. So I like the color, but I need to. And I didn't mean to do a nice color. I just did. <laughs> that, now that happens all the time, by the way. When you're only thinking about value and you're not thinking so much about color, um, you might just hit an amazing color. So that can happen. Usually doesn't happen. I hit this light into there right away this will all flood in so I'll hold off on that I do love these uh, this little yellow accent through there that's kind of nice go ahead in there. so while all that's tacking up and then that little pinks and yellows going in this, I mean like this light part down here on the very bottom that's really bright that's, that's a very bright color. That would be a lower value. You could almost make it white. I'm just taking, giving a little bit of bridge color on there. I got a little bit of a green stuff back here. You say bright, does that refer to the value? What was I saying bright about? Yeah, oh, the value of this? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. But don't hold it against me if I butcher those words. <laughs> all right. So this is just the color of all those millions of branches, these light branches. Now, how do we get those white things? It's really, e really easy to do in oil, right? I just cough them in there. <clears throat> your fingernail, no. <laughs> yeah, the end of your razor blade. Yeah. Huh? Another brush. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can never. See, I'll get these brushes. A lot of light, sort of pinkish values in there. I just want to look at his palette once in a while. But no, I'm fine. Totally fine. Yeah, I just have a whole bunch of reds, yellows, and blues. A lot of these yellows are the same yellow. Sometimes I'll put it out in a new, in a new area, just because I don't want it to mix with. I want a fresh yellow. Yeah. 
So, yeah, these pellets are a lot cheaper. So, uh, once they get really gnarly, I just, you know, you can just hit the. Now, if you hit the branch, see when it's dark, I mean, when, when it's wet, you see how it gets darker? Uh huh. This was semi dry, see? So I'll wait for it to tack up a little bit more. Did you know that's a white sycamore? I thought it was a birch. The western uh, white the western sycamore. western white sycamore. I don't know if this one's right. That's so are these bushes kind of moving down? Dry brush them. So the dry brush, see, gives you that beautiful little oaky edge. Crumbly, oaky edge. And all I'm doing is I'm, instead of working like this, I'm laying it on its side, see? Uh -huh. And I don't even realize I'm doing it anymore. You get to the point where you don't realize what, you just do what, what's necessary. That's, uh, that is what you get by doing a lot of, a lot. That's what repetition will give you. There's no, there is no, there's no excuse. There's no um, substitute. substitute. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Try painting and talking at the same time. Uh, how many paintings a year do you think you do? Well, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but there's just really no more room in my, my place. I did it. Usually. Your darks can last. Yeah. Yes, because you can't make things lighter. So, Rob, was that an oil? Is that yeah. An oil thing? Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh. oh man, I had so much fun. Compared to how, especially when it's silhouettes right up against the bridge, it's pretty dark. The lights on the trees are pretty dark, and you can see how dark they are when they silhouette right up against the bridge. So I'm actually painting the. I'm using that as the light of my tree, and I think I think it actually could go darker. That's the thing with watercolor. You you make a guess, and then of course it's got to dry, or it's got to set up to a point where you know it's not going to get much lighter than that, and then. And then you come back and the guys in there. Probably one of the little. Sh sh you know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some little darks through here too. I see. Now you see that that's a pretty stiff dry brush because there's nothing wet on there first. But if I just take a little water and wet all that first, now when I I can dry brush into that, mm, that's, that's pretty wet. <laughs> yeah. and so it's all about just controlling your water. I just wanted some of this little, little dark area behind me. I wonder if this is set up enough for me to come back in. Here. You can just use your finger now too. Not really. Well. Try it at different stages. Like for instance, if it's really wet, if it's really, really wet, and you do it, it'll just watch it all leaks in there and gets dark. But if you want it to stay light, you'll want to come back into it when it's kind of damp. Damp enough so it won't seep back into it. So that that, that dried up a little too much. Does it get dark because you just kind of rubbed up the paper? Is that why it gets dark? Because the paint there is not No, well, the, the paint yeah, leaks back up like leaks back into the light part and, and you just rip it. So um, that, that's probably what makes it kind of dark. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it probably has something to do with uh, Hit it. 
We can hit it like that through there. And then wait till it, give it about a minute, about two minutes. So are you finished with the value? Yeah. Work. So now you're just adding the See, see what I, and then. That looks nice, yeah. They'll, I'm just gonna gradate them into the light. And they'll cast little shadows. I don't see too many, no, there's not too many cast shadows there. Now that'll, that'll probably dry a little bit different, but. Back there, along the edges and underneath things. I might want to just put a few of those guys. Remember, I'm thinking of it like a like a big cotton ball, so it's getting shadow underneath, underneath, underneath. Here too, underneath that. Come back a little bit. And for the edges of these uh, trees, this might be a place, well, I'm dry brushing, but with the very end of it, because look at the ends of those trees. See how they're all like this? They're like this. Yeah. You're doing a lot of that, right? Huh. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You're just pulling down. Yeah, crisscrossing my strokes a little bit. It's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's the miracle brush. Oh my god. <laughs> It's no, the brush. brush. Nothing you can't. It's not the guy. No, it's a handy brush. brush right? I'm going to have it. We're going to sell 20,000 of these now. No. Well, you know what? You know, I, I've played with these brushes before, and I always like them. Um, and I like the sables, too. I can do all this with the sables. Yeah. But it holds more water. Huh. And... What kind of brush is that? It's a badger brush. Badger brush. Okay. So now, see how stiff a lot of these edges are. All I'm doing is yeah. using water now and softening that edge. Just water. I'm sorry, see? I didn't what kind of brushes are Badger. Badger. Badger, badger uh, has more of a bristle. He's, he, he, uh, he owns a couple of them. What if you're a vegan artist? <laughs> like that area like that. Twisters. A few of these little guys in there. It's sand. Right there, did you see the sand? This, here? Yeah. I just did that. Yeah. So that makes it look like you're. Yeah. Like yeah, it looks like I went like that. Yeah. yeah. Negative. Yeah, so Thank you. You could though, right? It is tricky. That looks yeah. so neat. Yeah. And you could do the same thing around these, they're a little more crumbly looking. So I could just. Modulate that area. Now I'm using more of the side of my brush because that's what I did with these oaks. Remember the crumbly, oaky thing? Um, that's a pretty hard edge, so I'll just take a little water. There might not be there, but some of the ones that if they're really standing out, usually it's because they have something dark behind them. So if you come back and paint something, it doesn't have to be everywhere, but if you paint something like that behind it, really make that stand out, right? Mm -hmm. So these are. I did the best I could. <laughs> Got a little bit more shadow down there. Bridge there. A couple of cat shadows. And Rob Sheriff, the two supreme leaders. Right. 
Well, you just brought that tree on the right up over the bridge to kind of stop the eye, like you did yeah. the oil. Yeah, they're almost there, so I figured I'll take them all away. Just a couple of those right, little guys. Artist. Do you use acrylic white? You can use acrylic any way you want. Acrylic will do it, but it actually dries. It actually dries darker, which is well, you know that. I know. So what do you come back with for the white on a watercolor? Wash. Wash. Or yeah, wash. what's the name of the watercolor white? Titanium. 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 Uh, Titanium. See how he worked out his values. You see how he's not really thinking so much about color because he's got almost black in there. But but he got the he nailed the value with that. Now you come in, and then it looks like you're introducing your color in later. And you can look at that little tasty little orange right there. Huh? <laughs> Why not? It's the tuck. Look at these. These strokes, one stroke, right? Yes. Very much in the in the Chinese way. Excuse me. I would absolutely keep with that. Keep with that. Nail as much as you can on the first try with one stroke. I don't care if it takes you ten minutes to think about that stroke. And that's what that's what the, that's what they'll do. Even Sergeant would do that too. He got a lot of his ideas about showing his brush strokes off uh, from Eastern painting, and uh, would often. I mean, people think they look so spontaneous. So many of those are not as spontaneous. As they he would think about that stroke, and he might put a stroke in and take it out a few times just to get it right. That's how much a stroke meant by. Um, uh, as with anything else, you get better at it the more you do it. You know, this is a new technique. And you were, he added a, check this out, there's a medium that will turn your regular oil painting into water base. It's called medium W. 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 Yeah, you can find it in the uh, leaks. So you can add it as a medium, just like you would add any other medium to your oil paint. And this makes it water soluble. I've never tried it. I just use this as a lens uh, oil, just like a oil, you add oil to it. So it will turn the regular oil paints into water soluble. So you can wash your brush with water. That's what uh, basically I'm doing. Yeah. Did it work? It worked. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. 